All righty, welcome to the Media Current Contrib Half Hour. It is our last meeting of January 2022. And today we're going to continue working on porting a module from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9. Um, some housekeeping, my name is Damien McKenna, community lead at Media Current. I use pronouns he, him. I've been involved in Drupal since 2007, do a bunch of stuff, but people recognize me as that guy with the bunny ears who hops around the issue queues. My time is sponsored by Media Current. We're a full service digital agency that implements world-class so open source software development strategy and design to achieve defined goals for enterprise organizations seeking a better return on investment. And we love working with Drupal. These meetings are set up as a community project. Go to drupal.org slash project slash contrib underscore half underscore hour to see the upcoming schedule that in hindsight, I do need to update. But if you leave a comment in today's issue, you get issue credit just for hanging out as soon as I post the video. Um, the, these meetings follow the Drupal Code of Conduct. Go to drupal.org slash DCOC if you have not read it recently. And the upcoming schedule is you have particular topics you'd like us to look at. Um, We'll see how much we can get through today. We might uh, jump back to an issues review next week. But if you have ideas, please drop them in the planning issue. So some news from around the Drupal sphere. This week, anybody who was paying attention to the security updates would have seen I think it was 18 different modules marked as unsupported. And I thought it'd be worth having a quick chat about that. So when a module or theme, yes, so a project, when a Drupal.org project is marked as unsupported, it means the security team has uh, worked with somebody who reported a security bug and has tried to work with the maintainers of that project to get the issue resolved. And for whatever reason, <clears throat> um, the process came to a halt and the maintainer was either no longer able to or no longer interested in uh, supporting the module and doing a uh, fixing the issue or working with the reporter to fix the issue. And so um, the module ended up, the, the, the project ended up being marked as unsupported. When that happens, the project is, the maintainership is changed so that the previous uh, maintainers are no longer, no longer have full access to manage the project and the releases are uh, marked as unsupported. That causes a bit of consternation for site maintainers all over the world and people who are building sites with the um, modules and themes in question. What happens then is very often this kicks the community into high gear to try and fix the problem. Um, people contact the security team looking to um, uh, resolve the issue. Sometimes a maintainer had their email filters set badly and they never noticed the emails that just got filtered through and had been ignored. And so it then kicks them into action. But uh, in the end, very often it leads to new maintainers stepping up to uh, resolve the security issues and to ultimately take on maintainership and get new security updates out there. Um, 
And some of the items that are some of the modules that were marked as unsupported this week were heavily used. So I would expect in the next week or so for several of them to have new security updates. When the new security updates are posted, there will not be a new security advisory. Instead, what happens is that the old security advisory that said unsupported is replaced with the an updated advisory that explains what the actual problem is as usual. And then there will be a security update you can download for your site. Um, and then the new maintainers hopefully continue to maintain the project, continue to bug fix and improve it, etc. Uh, but at that point, you have the person in charge of that project to continue uh, pushing it forwards. Um, so if your sites had been using one of the modules or I think there were some themes this week that were marked as unsupported. There's no need to panic. Give it a few days, give it a sorry, early next week, see if there are updates available. Um, if there aren't, at that point you might consider whether you want to step up and maintain the project yourself. Um, very often it's not a huge amount of work. It's just work to work through and fix the security problem um, and then take on the role of maintaining that project. Uh, it is worth mentioning that in order to, main, to uh, take on maintainership of a project that has been marked as unsupported, you do have to have gone through the security the application security review process um, at the git vetted status. Uh, I'm sure we can talk about that another day. But um, so if you have a brand new account in Drupal.org, uh, you're not going to be able to take over maintainership of something like that. Um, but uh, there's still the majority of people on Drupal.org are still in a position to be able to step up. Um, worst case, you might be able, if your site uh, requires one of these projects, um, you might be able to find somebody you could uh, sponsor to do the work or something. But anyway, uh, so, Stay tuned, hopefully by next week's meeting, we might have some updates on new security fixes for some of those modules and maybe some themes. All right, um, anybody have any questions about that whole thing? I know the process is a bit strange and confusing. Okay. Um, Anybody have any news they'd like to share about the class? Global okay. Contribution oh. Weekend is this weekend. Oh, yes. I completely forgot about that. Let's pop out. Um, weekend 2022. So, Yes, if you are around this weekend and want to have some time and want to get involved, uh, go to drupalcontributions.opensocial.site and you can find it through there um, where there's this coordination thingamajig happening to help coordinate people. Um, I believe there's also a Slack channel, if I remember correctly. Um, but at the very least, uh, there's probably, I know in previous years, they have added a tag 
for the contribution weekend. Uh, I'm sure if you search the issue tags, you'll be able to find the appropriate. I, I think one. if you if you click on that link in the top left where it says general room for Drupal uh, Global Contribution Weekend, just down, yeah, right there. Um, there's a comment there at the bottom that links to, uh, maybe you have to have joined already. Um, but in the comment, it links to a list of issues that have already been tagged. Okay, now I can go back to that page and it might show the comments. There we go. Yeah, it looks like so Contribution Weekend 2022 is the tag. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> so this is good. So there are ones that people are trying to hope that folks will work on, kind of planning ahead. But also, uh, if you do work on something this weekend, please tag it with Contribution Weekend 2022. And as always, if you use the issue tag field, it does an autocorrect or auto, it does a um, uh, auto complete. Yeah, com yes, thank you. Could not think of auto complete to show you the matching tags and sorts them by frequency of use. So the ones that are more heavily used will be at the top. And the reason for that is an interesting discussion for another day. But thank you for that tip. Um, awesome. All right. So um, yeah, that'll be good. I look forward to seeing what everybody gets up to. Um, so this week, let me go back to the slideshow. This week, we're going to continue working on porting Quantcast to Drupal 9. It is a very simple um, uh, JavaScript tracker thingamajig. And it just needs a little bit of JavaScript output added to the page. Um, Last week we worked on the settings page and corresponding permission controlling that. Today I want to add the last piece, which is adding the tag output. So let's get into it. Um, come on, seriously. Okay, there we go. So uh, where's my page? So here's the settings page and that is not the code base. That is not the code base. This is the code base. And we have very simple directory structure so far. There are only a couple of things in it. There's a settings form. The um, theme file is not worrying about right now. There's an info file. There's a permission file. There's a routing file. There's a menu links file or links menu file, whatever. Then there's an install configuration file that preloads the settings, the settings variables for the settings page. And then there's a schema file for defining what type of variables are in the settings file. So, um, the idea being, <clears throat> at the end of it, we have a settings object that, or um, configuration object called quantcast.settings that inside of that has a value called pcode, and we can load that to create the necessary code on the page. Um, next off, uh, we are going to look at the 
page output um, in the dot module file. So I'm going to start off with renaming or updating the description, the file doc block. Um, and I'm going to go with a very simple comment. Uh, primary hook implementations for the quantcast module. Everything else will be in a readme file that we'll add later. Uh, I'm going to leave the, well, let me see. The help item needs to be redone because the syntax there is different. So I'm just commenting it out for now. Um, I'm going to comment out the theme because I'm not, I'm just going to insert the raw HTML. Uh, I'm going to remove the visibility logic, other logic. Um, ultimately, I'm going to be replacing hook build or hook, hook page build with a different hook. Oops. Um, and it is going to be a function quantcast can be a uh, hook page attachments because we're just going to for now add some simple HTML to the page header and comment implements hook page attachments and as mentioned before all of this has been done bef been done before so we don't need to remember all of the code and all of the possibilities, we can go to code we wrote six months ago, or in this case, I don't know, four years ago, and go, okay, hook page attachments. Looks like this, and we add something to the attachments array. So first things first, attachments is an array and I'm going to use the old uh, HTML code from before um, but it needs to be added to the page body as well arg um, page bottom, you know, let me take a quick turn left and see if that is still uh, a suggested way of doing it. List changes, Drupal. I'm going to see what the re recommended replacement is for hook page build because it's been a while since I looked at it. Here we go. So added hook page attachments and attachments alter and removed hook page build. So it might be. In Drupal 7 and 8, before this change, it was possible for any module to make dynamic page alterations, thereby implicitly allowing arbitrary dynamic page alterations and easily breaking cacheability. Okay, fine. There are only two valid use cases of dynamically adding things to the final page. Assets that aren't associated with a specific bit of content, but with the entire page. And adding things to the special page top and page bottom regions. So, um, before you could change page content. Now, you can no longer change page content. So now you have hook page bottom and hook page attachments. So let's go with the notion of splitting this in two. And implements hook page bottom. So we'll add the first bit to the page header, then we'll add the second bit to the page footer. Quant or the page bottom. Uh, page bottom. And so 
for the attachments bit, we are adding, so the old head code here. Um, so I'm going to leave all of that code as is. Wait, this is just, so looking at this code that it is adding, this is literally just boilerplate HTML, or sorry, JavaScript. And the proper way of doing that is with more layers, but a, a little bit of screaming at TextMate, okay. It found the, the directory I created, so I'm going to create a new file in here called quantcast uh, header, and I'm going to put in the JavaScript in there, um, and remove the comment, don't care about that. Uh, I'm going to add a file doc block just for completeness sake, um, file. This is um, default header portion of the quantcast tracker code. So in theory, that should be fine to load in the page header. Now I need to be able to tell Drupal, hey, please load this. And I do that with a library and quantcast. Um, again, I forget the syntax on that. I don't have one there. Um, let's take a look at, you know, let's just jump into Drupal core. Um, in say block content does it have libraries no oh wait duh themes all the themes have libraries so there's a libraries file um so we have the version element and then if we scroll down we have uh, let's see ah js so we have a JavaScript element. And in there, we do the path to the file and then any attributes it needs. So for now, let's just do quantcast header.js. Then in theory, we should be able to load, not gonna deal with dependencies, etc. In theory, we should be able to load this by telling it um, to add the um, quantcast, uh, oh wait, quantcast, um, library on the page. Uh, so in theory, we don't need that, that is gone. So now we just need the page, hook page bottom. Uh, let's look at hook page bottom. And it is, passes in an array, so you can modify it. Uh, I'm going to add page bottom, and then we do attachment, attachments, I forget. Um, and then, or is it, apologies, uh, hook library, I think it's library info, place with that, so, 
and then it does not describe how to add them to the page. Let's check the documentation real quick. So attached library. So we need to follow this kind of syntax. Um, and it is going to be the quantcast module. Let's do rename the library thing to header. So I am going to leave that as is. Well, actually, do a quick PHP check on the code, make sure it worked. OK. Then I'm going to go to the home page and reload the cache. And in theory, because I didn't add any conditional logic to hook page bottom, in theory, it should add this header file to every page. Um, of course, CSS and JS aggregation is enabled. Let me turn that off real quick so I can see what the actual files are. Um, Quantcast. And it did load the Quantcast header.js file. So that is excellent. Um, the last bit then is to add the page body piece, which is this chunk of HTML. Uh, for now, I am going to keep it really dirty code just to make sure that it is working as expected. Short array syntax and markup. Um, I need to add the uh, variable um, p code podcast code URL. I'll need to look that up. Um, so then it, um, going to real quick, remember the config, wait, no, page attachments, I forget how to load the config object. Here's one I wrote before, didn't work because, let me see, um, ah, I used the same kind of logic here lots of times. Yes, so, okay, so settings, it's called quantcast settings and then the p code is if I remember correctly the variable is it p dot code or just p code so in theory then we can do p code equals settings and then add p code to the file let me Remove this part, put in P code there as well, just so there's something. Quick 
quick validation of the code. Then on the D9 site, reload the page. And we should, at the bottom, um, see the string qevents.push. Ah, OK. So almost there. Not quite. I will need to fix this up. Um, rushing out of or running out of time there, but uh, I'll follow up on this next week and, or over the week and be able to show you the working system next week. So uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week uh, with some news issues in Q&A. Hope everybody has a fantastic week and thanks for stopping by.